So we move on to chapter 14 on equilibrium. First of all, let's talk about what's going on between these two pictures. This happens at t equals zero, and this is an hour later. They want a balanced equation for the system that includes both a forward and a reverse reaction. In this first one that they've marked at time equals zero, I see some carbon monoxide and I see water. On this side, well, here's some carbon dioxide and here's some water, but I also have a bunch of carbon dioxide and some diatomic hydrogen. So when I go to write it, I'm going to be using the carbon dioxide and water on this side, on the left side. On the right side, I am going to ignore the carbon monoxide and water and just focus on these. So here is what I would come up with with my balanced equation. That the carbon monoxide and water can become carbon dioxide and hydrogen gas, or the reverse direction, see the other head of the arrow here, the carbon dioxide and hydrogen gas can become carbon monoxide and water. How would adding more carbon monoxide after an hour affect the frequency of the collisions between the reactants. So they're asking us to consider the kinetics of the situation because we were doing kinetics in the last chapter and we said that the rate of a reaction depended on the concentration of the reactants. If I added more carbon monoxide, that was a reactant. So we would expect the rate in the forward direction to get higher. It's adding a reactant, so it will increase the frequency of the collision between reactants and the rate of the forward reaction would increase. If I removed half of the carbon dioxide in the system after an hour, how would that affect the frequency of the collisions between the products? And then how would it affect the rate of the reverse reaction? Well, the reverse reaction would be based on the concentration of hydrogen gas and carbon dioxide. And so if I removed some of the carbon dioxide, there would be fewer of them to hit each other and the rate of the reverse reaction would go down. So you see, we can very sneakily do this and that would cause this reaction to say, oh, I need to produce more of the carbon dioxide because this reaction has an unchanging amount of forward. This was here and I made it drop down. So now there's going to be more that flows this way and I can convince it to create more of the products that way. And this is something that chemical engineers do very well. They find ways of removing the product that they're after so that the reaction will continue past where the equilibrium initially would have put it. Since these elementary reaction rates depend on the concentration, they always slow down as it is consumed. So this is the red one. That's the forward rate. So the forward rate, the reactants at first, there's lots of them, but you start using them up. And so then K1 becomes smaller. At the same time, initially there was no product whatsoever. So the reverse rate was nothing. But as you create more product, then the reversed rate is going to increase. Ultimately, you achieve equilibrium when the rates forward and backward are exactly the same. Now, that does not mean the concentrations are the same because the rate is not the same thing as the concentration. But it does mean that once you've gotten to it, the concentrations will not continue to change.